The Zangati VI Dashboard is at the heart of the VI Dashboard Suite, and it is designed to encompass all of the major components of a server virtual infrastructure. You will notice that it keeps track of the virtual machines, the hosts, the various network paths that connect those hosts out to the physical world and the rest of the data center. It encompasses the data stores that sit behind the hosts and the paths that interconnect the data stores to the hosts. It also measures and keeps track of interactions to physical servers that may be outside of the virtualized environment and also keeps track of the various port groups and virtualized network constructs that sit behind each of the virtual machines. All of this information is summarized into a performance index at the top of the screen. Of course, like all Zangati dashboards, you can see that the display is continuous and responds in real time to exactly what's happening in the network. If I grab the slider at the bottom, you can see that the dashboard is immediately responsive and is able to track with even the most minute changes in the infrastructure over the last several minutes, providing a great way to see exactly what the context is surrounding the environment. Similarly, there is also a red record button at the bottom of the transport that enables us to capture any of the live displays inside the Zangati dashboard and preserve very, very granular information in the time domain. If we switch to the full version of the dashboard, you will see that we're tracking dozens of metrics across each of the elements that comprise the VI dashboard. The performance health index is calculated continuously based on all of the metrics that we're keeping for each of these areas. For each of them, we're measuring the performance against best practices, first of all, that are defined by VMware for virtual machines and hosts and data stores. And based on that information, we're able to find out if things are absolutely wrong and they're just not going to lead to good virtualized performance. Secondarily, we're also tracking every item inside the dashboard through our automated profiling system. It is constantly monitoring the performance and the behavior of every item that we're tracking and establishing what the normal behavior patterns are for each object. When things step out of line, a couple of things happen. First of all, an invisible finger will reach out and press this red record button to make a, a capture of the exact parameters around that particular alert or event. And secondarily, the performance health index will be impacted proportionate to the degree of the proportionate to the degree of the storm. So in this particular case, we can see that there are several host alerts and a few virtual machine alerts. If we were to look at these virtual machine alerts, we can see that it looks like there are some virtual machines uh, that have some issues. It looks like there's a desktop here, for example, that's swapping and uh, another machine that has some high CPU usage. If we were to play back this particular alert, what it will do is it will load up the recording that's in process for this particular virtual machine, and it will show us instantaneously exactly what the CPU usage is from the time that this alert started and on forward in time. Now, in this particular case, we can see that the CPU usage is very high, and we might actually wonder what stands behind that, what processes are causing the CPU utilization to be running about the level of a full core inside my environment. In order to dive further, we will use the Windows System Viewer. Under the System Performance tab of the recording, we can actually play back a part of the recording that was made using the Windows Management Interface that drills in and shows us the exact processes that were running at this time, as well uh, by CPU, as well as by memory. And we can see that in this case, it looked like there's some kind of script on the machine that has gone awry. And in this case, if this was a, a typical server process, we would be able to probably talk to the server owner and discuss you know, what the stuck process is with them, rather than assume that the virtual infrastructure is to blame. And in this way, the Zangati's ability to provide complete contextual details from the hypervisor level metrics all the way to processes taken from inside the guest it provides a very powerful troubleshooting environment in which to find and resolve issues quickly. Now, that's an example of a fairly manual workflow. We were sitting in front of the dashboard, we noticed that there was some kind of an issue, and we kind of followed our nose by clicking on icons and looking through recordings to diagnose the problem ourselves. 
An obvious question at this point would be to ask if the Zangati appliance provides any dedicated heuristics or analysis that would do that work and automate the process for us. And indeed, we've developed something that we call the storm tracker, which is just to the right of the performance index here. When I click on the storm tracker, it will actually open a different representation of the environment that's looking at an entire vCenter, and it shows the various hosts that are inside the environment and the virtual machines that are present and places where there's some performance degradation will be a little bit grayed out inside the environment. What I can do is in any type of storm that's present in this environment, I can go ahead and like this data store contention event, for example, I can go ahead and take a look at it behind every one of these rows for the individual items affected by this data store contention. We actually have one of those recordings and you could certainly go through manually and inspect each of them. What's more powerful, however, is to take advantage of Zangati's automated analysis and recommendation system. I'm going to press the analysis and the recommend button. And what the system has done is it's gone out and it's taken all of the virtual machines that were complaining of performance degradation, and it's looked at the usage patterns of each of them, and it's compared them to try to find out what is going on at the base of it. And in this particular case, it looks like one particular virtual machine or two of them have excessive data store latencies and also higher data store IOPS than the other VMs. And in this case, the data store contention is caused by the excessive use of the data store by these two virtual machines. So it looks like we have a backup device um, as well as an, uh, an analytics server that are really consuming more than their share of the virtual machine. Now, at this point, we have a pattern established whereby we have some machines that are being victimized, if you will, by, some, by the activity of some other virtual machines. And an obvious question would be, is this important? Does it happen often? Does it keep happening? What's the history of this? And do I need to be concerned about it? Or is it something that just happens to be going on in the environment right now? Inside the recommendation, we provide a metric that we call storm intensity. And this is a measure of the frequency, the severity, and the duration of this exact pattern of activity. So instead of looking at decorrelated alerts, this is taking all of that into account and it's showing us that over the last 30 days, it looks like on one, two, three occasions, this particular storm existed. So it's not that this is something that happens all the time. It does seem to be a little bit worse towards the end of the month than the beginning of the month. And there's certainly an incidence here, you know, very close today. But uh, at a base level, there's no direct correlation between the storm intensity and capacity usage. So in other words, the system has enough capacity for this from a raw storage capacity perspective, but the recommendation of our system is to upgrade the data store so it can handle a higher rate of IO. Um, you could certainly upgrade the network to reduce congestion, or obviously, since we've called out the specific systems, perhaps move one of them to a different data store. This type of analysis that enables you to move from a graphical representation of the environment down to a detailed cause and effect with detailed recommendations is tremendously useful and automates the entire process. Inside most environments, those storm reports would be automated and delivered on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, whatever you decide, to your desktop. In addition to this automated handling of events and the powerful recordings, there are many real-time benefits to the Zangati dashboard as well. If I were to click on any of the metrics inside this host column, for example, it would immediately take me to the monitor tab where I would see a tabular list of my various ESX hosts and then be able to drill into any of them for detail. Similarly, if I look at my whole list of virtual machines here, it's very easy to pick a particular virtual machine, perhaps like my vCenter, and go ahead and double click on it and instantly pull up the complete performance context for this virtual machine. We can see any number of metrics related to this particular workload. For example, we can graph out things like the CPU ready, the consumed memory, memory ballooning, different bit rates that are occurring across the network, data store activity. We can see all of the network traffic in context by TCP and UDP port. We can see which data stores this is connected to. If we wanted to, we could use the Windows System Viewer, similar to in recordings, to actually see directly into the processes and the memory consumption and inside the guest operating system. 
We can also use this as a way to pivot to any of the connected infrastructure. For example, this vCenter server is using this NFS data store. A single click will pivot me to that NFS data store and show me the world from the perspective of that data store. In this case, it's sorted by hosts and we can see exactly how the various hosts are utilizing this data store. But we could just as easily pivot this and instead show the virtual machines that are actually connected to this data store and what their performance is. If we wished to look at one of these hosts, it would be a simple matter of clicking on one of them and instantly the context would pivot to show us that entire host. So in this way, it's possible to navigate seamlessly across the virtual infrastructure, following your nose and seeing the linkages in context that might surround a particular issue or an optimization opportunity inside the environment. Of course, there is also a search box in the upper right that lets you put in any part of an IP address, uh, any part of a host name, a MAC address, etc., and we'll instantly find those things to be able to jump to them directly. In addition to these real-time capabilities, the Zangati system also has a variety of powerful reports. The reporting system is very simple to understand. We have a variety of summary reports, perhaps starting with an alert report that will show the alerts that happened during a time period and give you a way to uh, sort them by the severity and so on and so forth and to see exactly what was affected and how long it occurred. Similarly, we also have the ability to see capacity alerts and then run a variety of overall reports and summary reports against the system that might summarize all of the virtual machines, all of the data stores, so on and so forth. If we were to come down and look at virtual machines, uh, here's an example of a virtual machine report against this vCenter server where we can see its network usage, its CPU usage, data store consumption, so on and so forth. And the system is very good at providing these detailed kind of metrics across virtual machines, hosts, across servers, port groups, any of the various categories inside the system. Another report that is particularly useful is the outliers report. The outliers report enables you to take a, an entire category of items, perhaps like hosts or virtual machines, and plot them all on a one graph and instantly see the outliers during a time period for a particular metric. So we can see that out of all of my hosts, it looks like this purple one, for example, had a, a much higher degree of network activity than the others during the reporting time period. Similarly, we can also use this to spot CPU usage trends, data store activity, so on and so forth. And it provides a great way to see things that are actually unusual in the environment and which things are normative. Of course, the system also has a detailed capacity system as well. The capacity system inside the VI dashboard is designed to look at all of the items that the dashboard is tracking and produce a single number, a capacity index that provides an overall indication of the capacity health of the system. Where there are capacity alerts, you can clearly see what the affected object is, whether it's an ESX host, a data store, a virtual machine, so on and so forth. And we'll show you the the, the usage, the capacity, the threshold, and when the, the crossing dates are things of the sort. Of course, there are a variety of reports that go along with this capacity capability. One of them is simply to list things out according to their capacity utilization. So in this case, we can see uh, the particular things that are higher users of capacity. Some things are using a whole lot of memory, for example. The flip side of this coin, of course, is not to see things by who's using the most capacity, but to see which things have the most spare capacity. And inside most environments, there's almost always some machines that have been over-provisioned. And being able to grab some of those resources back can have a powerful impact on the amount of things that you can run or the speed at which they can run inside the environment. Here, for example, are a number of virtual machines that seem to be over-provisioned by a fairly large amount of CPU. Now, in my lab, the CPU speeds range from about 2.4 to, to 3 gigahertz, depending on the exact host. And so for a machine to have 10 or 11 or 5 or 6 uh, gigahertz of spare capacity, this is an indication that they're over-provisioned by at least 2 to 4 or 5 cores relative to what the workload is actually demanding. And so these are all opportunities for us to claw back resources or to take back memory from systems that simply aren't using what they've been given. 
And in that way, of course, the entire infrastructure can run more smoothly. So the reports provide a powerful way to interact with the system. There's one other capability of the Zangati dashboard that's worth mentioning. When you look at the login screen for a Zangati dashboard, if you come up to the URL bar and put in trouble.jsp after the URL, you'll be taken to our visual trouble ticket portal. The visual trouble ticket is a powerful tool that enables server owners to file their own recordings. So there may be people inside of the IT department that don't have access to the Zangati appliance, and it's not their responsibility to manage the virtual environment. But if they have a problem with their server, perhaps finding it slow or finding reports hard to run or whatever their situation is, when they click the Create Visual Trouble Ticket button, back on the Zangati appliance, we will make a 15-minute recording with a one-minute pre-roll buffer of all of the conditions surrounding that VM, just like an alert recording or a storm recording. And this will capture all of the contextual details so that when someone looks at that ticket, they're going to be able to see exactly what was the case at that moment in time. And this is a great way to capture things before vMotion moves them or, or in a time when no one's looking at the environment in the exact way that would be needed to see what that particular server owner is seeing. All of these technologies taken together make the Zangati VI dashboard a powerful tool for any virtualization environment. It summarizes all of the major performance metrics across dozens and dozens of metrics into several easy to understand categories, helpful performance and capacity indices, and provides automated tools like the storm tracker and alert recordings to help capture the significant things inside the environment and allow administrators to take immediate action. In order to put the VI dashboard into your environment, simply visit our website and download your own copy of the dashboard today. The answers you need for your virtualization environment are easily and readily available with the VI dashboard.